So shouldn't there be extreme vetting at the border, too? Joining me now to debate is former Republican Congresswoman from New York, Dr. Nan Hayworth, and Democratic strategist Tuck, or Chuck Rocha. <laughs> I was looking at your hat, your new hat with the writing on it. Like it. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> well, so let's get right into this. Nan, I'll start with you. Um, extreme vetting at our southern border, a necessity. And why is it not happening now, or is it happening now? Uh, well, as you know, uh, Heather, the president has done as much as he can and is continuing to do by sending the National Guard to help with surveillance, to help with construction, by increasing administrative law judges' obligations to get these cases processed to help protect us. Uh, but it is very true that extreme vetting, which has been applied to targeted uh, nations that we know are the sources of terror, uh, should just as readily be applied to the threats on the southern border because thousands and thousands of people are pouring in. Most of them do not intend to do us harm, uh, but it still are breaking our laws. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's no reason that the technology that we're developing, the scrutiny, the techniques that we're developing to evaluate others should not be used at the southern border as you well. Know, uh, Chuck, we were talking a little bit about, you know, the, the increase, a 200 percent increase in apprehensions, up to like 50,000 apprehensions across the border. So why is this not happening in terms of the extreme vetting? Well, let me take a couple bites at this. First, let's talk about the raw numbers. There has been a small uptick in March, but last year, for example, there was only about 300,000 Mexicans that were coming in as compared to about 10 years ago where it was almost a million. Last year, you saw a net increase of people leaving America than coming into America. So I wouldn't say there's this huge flow of people, but I acknowledge there's been an uptick a little bit in March, and a lot of that's done to seasonal migration patterns. And back to our original point about the vetting, nobody in America wants anybody to come here who wants to do harm to America. But there's lots of good people who want to come to America, pay their taxes, and be a part of the country. And we keep talking about the one half of 1% of people who shouldn't be here to begin with. Well, that's true. I mean, and those people, a lot of those people are trying to do it the right way, too, and not trying to do it illegally. Here's what Hogan Gidley had to say, the White House Deputy Press Secretary, about the increase in people also trying to declare asylum. Listen to these numbers. We are absolutely working to put an end to this immediately. This is one of those egregious loopholes that are in the law that allow people to come here and claim all types of things uh, as it relates to, I want to be free in this country for uh, credible fear, for example. We've seen a 1,700 percent, 1,700, not 17, not 170, 1,700 percent increase in people claiming credible fear from their previous countries. Oh, so and they want asylum. Right. So they want asylum here and they get it. And that's the thing, Chuck. I mean, I'll start with you on this point. All they have to do, and I've talked to, you know, several, I know you know firsthand these Border Patrol agents, they say all they have to do is put one foot across the border and they're either taken into custody where then they, you know, are released pending their court date or they declare, you know, this, uh, they claim credible fear that they cannot return to their country and then they're immediately given asylum. The drug cartels in Central America have had control of those governments for a long time, and you see these people actually killing people in the streets in Central America, and you see mothers putting their children in the hands of somebody who's bringing them to America to literally save their lives. So that's why this law is in existence. Are there people that probably take advantage of it? Maybe, but I don't think we can turn our back on those women and those children, those people who are fleeing horrible situations mm -hmm. and literally running for their lives. All right, well, you know what, and, and that's the source of the, the, the conundrum, so to speak, because then on the other hand, Nan, you have 98% of heroin coming across the border as well. Absolutely, Heather. And look, uh, what Chuck is saying, uh, yes, there are certainly, we know there are people who are fleeing horrible situations, but that's, uh, if anything, you know, that's another reason to have the kind of vetting that will allow us to distinguish those with real claims versus those who are coming to the country to take advantage of Americans and to pursue criminal activity like MS-13, like uh, bringing drugs across the border and we have a lot of work to do with that but there is no reason at all why we should not apply the best technology and the best techniques to this part of uh, this enormous part of our border security all right Chuck and Nan thank you so much for joining us this week. morning all right you too Bye -bye.